peaceful as it appears, Moldova sits right next door to Ukraine and a searing, devastating conflict with no end in sight. Since February last year, the country of just two and a half million has been under a state of emergency, wary that the fighting might spread to its own territory by accident or design. For now, the EU's border agency Frontex offers a symbolic show of outside support. Moldova is hoping for much more. This is the border crossing point from Moldova into Ukraine. The nearest fighting at the current moment between Ukraine and Russia is roughly 100 kilometers away. The big question that dominates here is whether Moldova is Mr. Putin's next target. Conflict Zone has come here to gauge the level of concern. In the southeast of the country, Moldova shares a 200 kilometer stretch of the Dniester River with Ukraine. The waterway no longer just a border, but a dividing line between war and peace. Russian missiles targeting Ukraine have flown over Moldova, but today's border patrols are watching more for smugglers and people traffickers. All the same, the border police say they're ready to fight for their country, whoever threatens them. However large the force, and for as long as it takes. You're living next door to a huge war zone. Do you think you'll ever see peace in this region again in your lifetime? I hope so. But I, you're not I, sure? I think at this stage no one can be sure of that. But I think everyone wants to, to, to see peace. Especially given the fact that, as many others, I'm a parent and the last thing I want that my child sees war, especially close to home. So, I hope that soon there will be peace. So far, the threat to Moldova has appeared not from outside, but in anti-government demonstrations in the capital, Chisinau. Alongside them, a constant stream of cyber attacks, disinformation and bomb hoaxes that have rattled the authorities and put them on the defensive. Russia's hand, they say, is behind it all. What would need to happen for Russia to decide that they're coming across your border in force and will take control here in Moldova? Moldova's decision to walk along the European uh, values path and be a member of a democratic and free world that's exactly already the reason why Russia is so aggressive here in, uh, in this region. And uh, they can, uh, for now, do it if they manage to change the government by radicalizing the population. That would mean that they can put various scenarios in motion. That would mean that they can provoke Ukraine, including in opening the third front. That would mean that they could access the Black, Black Sea through Danube and uh, uh, influence including the trade uh, have different uh, uh, quite advantageous military positions that means proximity with uh, NATO troops and much 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 more that gives an extra power in negotiations with Brussels and when I say Brussels I mean all the capital of, of Europe that means regaining control and they don't need extra uh, reason that may be true but for President Maya Sandu in office since 2020 the prospect of direct Russian intervention has already come too close for comfort. Earlier this year, you accused the Russians of attempting a coup d'etat against your government. How close did you come to being toppled? We are much stronger this year than last year, for instance, when, when the, uh, the war in Ukraine started. Our institutions are much stronger and we have proof that uh, our institutions have been able to prevent pressure from implementing its scenario. It doesn't mean that uh, these attempts will not continue. But how close but did it come it to was actually ousting you? <clears throat> the institutions were strong enough uh, and Russia's plan proved to be not realistic enough because Russia believed that we were weaker 
uh, because that's what Russia wants Moldova to, to be, wants to be a weak institution, or a weak state with weak institutions. We were close, but our institutions managed to prevent this scenario. How and close? We have just, to stay, just hours away? Well, I'm not sure hours away, but weeks uh, in which uh, Russia was planning to, to undertake this uh, attempts of uh, overthrowing the government together with the criminal groups, together with the corruption groups uh, led by some Moldovans. Uh, but again, uh, thanks to the fact that we knew about these plans and thanks to the fact that our institutions managed to react quickly and they were vigilant enough, uh, this, this, was not, this hasn't happened. Do you feel personally under threat from Russia? There are, you know, there are risks when you come to uh, a position like uh, being the president of a country, but... Uh, but are there risks directed at you I from do, Russia? I do feel safe because I have a team here which uh, protects me. You have talked about the hybrid warfare. Um, Moscow has apparently distributed large sums of money to oligarchs in Moldova, essentially to cause trouble. You would seem to have very powerful enemies here. Do you know who they all are? Are we talking about a, a fifth column against you in this country? It's a combination. Um, we have politicians and people who have been receiving money from Russia for years to undermine our efforts to build a strong state here in the Republic of Moldova. More recently, some of the corrupt groups, which before uh, didn't have a geopolitical color, now joined Russia in its attempts to destabilize the country because the interests of the corrupt groups are to keep Moldova in the gray area, uh, to have weak institutions so that they could continue to steal uh, and they would not be put in prison, they would not uh, respond for the abuses that they've committed in the, in the past. So you have a combination of efforts now of those people who have been working for Russia for many years, who have been paid by Russia to, uh, to work against the Moldovan state, and now the, the corrupt groups which suddenly realize that they share the same objective with Russia to uh, make this country weak and, and to uh, benefit from that. June the 1st and dozens of European leaders were on parade in Moldova's capital. A dazzling unity display by the continent's most important politicians, armed with a powerful promise of support and the fervent hope that what happened in Ukraine won't happen here. Commission President Ursula von der Leyen praised Moldova for embodying what she called Europe's core values. That is solidarity which you showed towards the Ukrainian refugees, resilience, which you showed to Russia's blackmail, and unity, which you showed to link your destiny to the European Union. It was very moving to see a sea of European flags here in Chisinau streets last week. And my message to the people of Moldova is that we stand by you. We support you every step of the way on your path to the European Union. And today I'm glad to announce a new support package for Moldova with a double objective. We want to support you to address the impact of the war on your doorstep. And we want to bring you closer to the European Union. You said recently we believe we can save our democracy only as part of the EU. Is your democracy that fragile? The current ge geopolitical situation shows to us that Russia will continue to be a big source of instability for years to come. And Russia has been posing uh, threats to our democracy. And that's why we believe that our democracy will be safer within the EU. We value democracy, we've been fighting uh, hard to uh, protect our democratic institutions and processes, and especially to consolidate them. But we see that external challenges can have significant implications, especially on a small country like Moldova. You comforted by the fact that so many European leaders decided to come here? We're honoured and we see this as a strong signal of support.
and uh, you want more than a strong signal of support, you want more than moral support, don't you? You want actual support. We have been benefiting from support. We're They're very not grateful. promising you anything, though. Uh, we have the uh, candidate status now, and this is extremely important to us. To us, this is the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we have been benefiting from support uh, now that we had to deal with the energy crisis, with the economic implications of uh, the war in Ukraine, uh, with the refugee crisis. Yes, we do need support, but we have a strong determination here inside the country uh, to make uh, the EU integration uh, possible. And prevent you becoming Putin's next target? We do need uh, to be part of the EU family to feel safer. Are you afraid of being his next target? We do see what Russia is doing to Ukraine and there are reasons to be concerned, of course. You suggested Moldova might become a full member of the EU by 2030, but you could well be out of power by then. Your party has been polling in the low 20s for some of this year. Isn't that a worry? Wouldn't that uh, be a huge stumbling block to the EU if you got voted out of office? Uh, we made a commitment to be ready by 2030 uh, for the uh, uh, EU membership. And uh, we showed on May 21st, uh, a few days ago, uh, that there is popular support uh, when the uh, citizens of Moldova came to Chisinau, came into the street. Uh, we have the uh, polling, uh, we have the polls, uh, which show that more than 60% of Moldovans support the EU accession plan. And we'll continue to work to make sure that the Russian propaganda and its disinformation does not uh, reduce the popular support uh, for, for the EU integration. But this is an objective which is supported by the majority of people. There's no better place to test that public support than in one of the capital's main markets, where day-to-day -day concerns clearly trump any distant dreams of EU membership. Top of the list, poverty, unemployment and rising prices. And unless the government can turn around the economy, it may not be in power long enough to steer the country all the way to Brussels, a journey with no clear timetable, stretching perhaps many years into the future. Well, business. It all depends on the Сейчас в последнее время очень ухудшился. Много людей, которые не могут позволить себе вот такие продукты ну, сейчас. Безусловно. Кто виноват? В чем именно? За цены. Цены? Высокие цены. Ну это же все, это мировой кризис. Да. Война в Украине. Россия? Россия виновата. Виновата Россия, конечно. Она источник всех бед. Вот и все. Если бы она, как вам сказать, мировой преступник, это, ну как сказать, человеконенавистнический режим, ну они всегда такими были, история это доказывает. Поэтому их цель завоевать весь мир. И поэтому страдают все. Просто нужно сопротивление, чтобы было. Думаете, что Россия может нападать на Молдаву? Ну, я даже себе этой мысли не допускаю. Для нашего кармана ничего не позволяем. Были бы зарплаты приличные, вот, да, в других странах. Почему наши все уезжают в другие страны? Потому что там э, э, зарплаты приличные чувствуешь себя человеком и можешь зарабатывать и для себя, и для родителей, и кое какие сбережения складывать там. А здесь живешь только для своего существования. Спасибо и все большое. дорого, и не знаю, мы молодежь, считаем все дорого, а люди, которые на пенсии, с чем они живут? У них пенсия мизерная. За тысячем талели две тысячи, а коммунальные у них приходят два раза больше, чем их пенсия. Не Путин не виноват, это все мы виноваты. Мы создали такую атмосферу везде, потому что люди стали очень злые, очень неопрятные. 
Москва всегда была хорошая Москва для всех. Мы жили с Москвой хорошо, вы понимаете? Despite some warm feelings towards Russia, the old communist busts and statues in Moldova don't attract much interest these days. But even after nearly a year and a half of war in Ukraine, pro-Moscow politicians form an active, highly motivated opposition bloc that could regain power if things go badly for the current government. One of them is the former pro-Moscow president Igor Dodon, who calls Putin a patriot and says he'd restore a partnership with Russia if he got back into power. We asked for an interview, he made two appointments, both were cancelled. A year ago, prosecutors charged him with an array of crimes, including treason, financial irregularities and abuse of office. He's insisted he's innocent. Why the delay in bringing him to trial? He says it's political persecution. He has a point, doesn't he? Well, let's see. He was uh, supported by uh, Kremlin years in a row. He is a figure that has been uh, uh, openly preferred and supported by the Kremlin. And here in Kishino, in the Republic of Moldova, he was a promoter of the Russian Federation's interests. He was uh, feeding and supporting the oligarchs. He was doing businesses with them. He was directing the policies uh, into the direction that uh, facilitated and uh, allowed uh, uh, stealing of, of billions from the people. That means draining the budget. That means impediments in uh, uh, implementation of important development programs that will only benefit the uh, the people. You say this that, kind but of none of this has been proved in a court of law. He remains innocent until he's proved guilty. Doesn't of course, he? of course. So how of long? Course. How long is this going to go on? These charges hanging over his head. Don't people have a right to timely justice? Timely. For thirty years, here in the Republic of Moldova, we had only propaganda and infusion of. Uh, feeling of incapacity and total dependence of uh, Russia's will and Russia's policies. We have to learn once again to lead our country. Fifty kilometers outside the capital, there's another opposition stronghold that's dedicated to upsetting the government's learning program and beating it in the next elections due within two years. It's the city of Orhe, home to the pro-Moscow Shore Party, which has clearly invested heavily to give the people, well, fun. The day we visited, Moldovans were arriving by the coachload at the local fairground. Kakvam party ashore? Normal. Normal? Везде красиво, у нас есть парк Архейлен, там дети играются. Не знаю, другие, которые были, ничего не сделали у нас, ничего. А сейчас у нас все красиво. У нас в город приходят многие, многие люди, которые в Кишинев, им нравится здесь. А как вам Майя Санду? Ну, я ее очень поддерживаю. Ну, я вместе с ней, с Майей Санду. А Шор много дел для... для... Орхей. Да, очень. Для Аргеева он очень много сделал. Я в этом согласна. Но все-таки его политика вам не по нраву. Ну и его как э, репутация мне не очень нравится. Мы хотим обратно в Советский назад. Союз. Советский Союз? Да, мы хотим обратно в Советский Союз. You can walk the streets day and night here in Orhei, but you won't find the man who set up the shore party, Ilan Shore. He fled the country after being convicted for his part in a massive bank fraud. Shaw doesn't give many interviews, but we managed to contact him online at his current location in Israel, where he told us he was innocent, his trial had been rigged, and the real thief was the president, Maya Sandu. On Russia, though, not a word of criticism. Господин Шор, как вам война в Украине? Вам нечего сказать о военных преступлениях русских солдат? Я не комментирую, я не комментирую 
действия других государств. Я политический лидер, я политический лидер независимого, нейтрального государства, который воздерживается от комментариев других конфликтов. Я готов, чтобы Молдова была площадкой для гуманитарных и любых других процессов, но только не для того, чтобы высказывать свою точку зрения в тех или иных военных конфликтах. Вполне видно, почему Москва вас так любит. Меня любят моя семья, еще больше половины граждан Республики Молдова, я вам могу сказать откровенно. Эти люди меня любят, потому что они верят в меня, они идут со мной, и они придут к победе. Именно поэтому партия Шор очень скоро окажется у власти. И мы с большим душой и с открытием будем говорить и Западом, и с Востоком. Мы будем открытыми. Кто захочет, welcome. Whatever the political battles in Moldova, it's the war that dominates the government's thinking. Ministers know that for now they survive only because the Ukrainians are keeping Russia at bay. And if Ukraine loses, and if they lose, you lose too. We all lose, sir. Europe loses. It's not about the Republic of Moldova only. Do you believe that, you talked about Ukraine a moment ago, do you believe that Ukraine can win back all the land that Russia has occupied as it wants to? You look at the war from right next door. What's your Ukraine perspective here? Ukraine should be uh, helped, should get all the support to regain its territories. Otherwise, we need to live in a world where countries' borders are not respected anymore. And this is not a world anyone wants to live in. Does the prospect scare you? The fact that innocent people are being killed every day in Ukraine, this is something that scares everybody. Uh, so that's why we need to help Ukraine and we need to make sure that uh, such things don't happen anymore. You don't believe, do you, that this is a one-off adventure for the Kremlin? You think Russia will remain a threat for years to come, don't yes, you? Yes, that's what I believe. And that threat and that's will be why a, a military threat. And that's why accountability is very important. What do you see as President Putin's end game here? Just to enlarge the Imperium. Get that's, back the Soviet Union? Probably Soviet Union or even more. But it's clear that this is to, to enlarge their country, which is big enough. So what kind of basis will there be in future for Western relations with Russia? What, what can there be under those circumstances? The uh, democratic world and, and the entire world needs to make sure that Russia respects the territorial integrity of other countries. But as you've said yourself, we remain a threat to Moldova, at least while we're a democracy. So... That threat will continue. Russia will continue to be uh, a big source of instability uh, for years to come. That's why the continent needs to uh, stay together. And that's why the democratic world needs to work together and to help all the countries, like Moldova, uh, which want their democracy to survive. For us, the uh, easiest way to uh, consolidate our democracy and to preserve it is, is to be part of the EU. But that still doesn't give us all a way of living with this kind of Russia, this revanchist Russia. The risk is still going to be there. That's why accountability is very important. And Russia should be punished for what it is doing now in Ukraine.